It's Friday, everybody, and what a week we are having on House of Games. We're going to give away our trophy today, and there are two people right at the top of the leaderboard, very, very close together. Who is going to win the trophy? Would it be Sarah Medican? Hello. Philippa Perry? Nabil Abdul-Rashid? Or Luke Kempner? Hello, everyone. Sarah, three wins in a row, which is very impressive, I would say. But it's double points Friday. Shall we immediately just take a look at the leaderboards? Yes, please. OK. So you are in the lead, of course, with three wins. But Luke Kempner, yeah. just two points mm. behind you. Just lurking behind you. <laughs> <laughs> because he won on Monday and then he keeps coming second. So yeah. eight points for a win today, six for second, four for third and so on. So really, you've got to win again. Well, he's got that hunger that I had when I failed on Monday. <laughs> so, see, I don't call it coming second, I called it failed. Failure, yeah, failing. Yeah, failing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's, he's failed for three hunger. days in a row, for sure. He's got the hunger. The thing is, is that when I won, I won by one point. When Sarah won, she's won, like, by five points every day. So I feel like Sarah, it's Sarah's to lose. Yeah, oh... oh wow. Had, listen, I mean, <laughs> you, had, you, had a, you called him a loser. Now he's getting... <laughs> Now, I've got him a failure. He's, oh, so, I'm so uh, sorry. You're fine. Right. Yes, you called him a failure. Right. I, I'd really like Sarah to win, actually. And now he's getting <laughs> getting in your head. Looking good for both of you, Philippa. We need a win from you. Shall we take a look at today's prizes? Oh, you yes, and Nabil please. yet to get on the uh, the prize board. Today would be the day Nabil and Philippa. And if you do, you will win one of these. There is Ooh. the House Against Debt Chair, the sparkling wine, wine, <laughs> the uh, plant pot. The Gentleman's Cologne and the Espadrilles. What do you think you fancy there, Philippa? Uh, deck chair, please. Deck chair, Nabil? It's going to be the perfume. I'm a perfume mm. guy. Beautiful. Um, it's been a wonderful week of quizzing. Philippa and Nabil, we'd love to see you winning a prize. Shall we quiz? Let's quiz. Our first round today, that's good. Sorry, I, I'm no, so ready for thank it. Thank you. <laughs> You're so up for it. Shall we quiz? Let's, Let's quiz. quiz. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like is our first round. Fingers on buzzers, everybody. Your first category is musical instruments. What I'm going to do, I'm going to show you some pictures, and they will essentially spell out the name of a musical instrument. If you tell us what you see in the pictures, they will tell you the name of a musical instrument. So, which musical instrument is this, please? Sarah. Bagpipes. Bagpipes. Bagpipes is the right answer. Um, next clue. Sarah. Trumpet. Trumpet, exactly. Oh, <laughs> a city of banker. A banker clown. Trumpet. Well done, everyone, if you got that at home. Next musical instrument. That is Sarah again. Piano. P-N-O. Oh. Oh, it is. Well done. P and O de Collet. P and O. Well played, Sarah. Your next category is words in the NATO phonetic alphabet. Which words are these? Yes, Nabil. Foxtrot? Foxtrot? Yeah. Absolutely right. Well done. Jamie Fox on a horse trotting. Foxtrot. Next NATO phonetic alphabet word. Yes, that's Nabil again. X-ray. X-ray. Yeah. Well played, Good Professor X and Ray Charles. Nicely done. Next NATO phonetic alphabet word. Luke. Zulu. Zulu. Nicely done. <laughs> Sharing the points out now. Your next category is items of clothing. But which items of clothing? Yes, Luke. Jacket. Jacket. Well done. Oh, Depth score on Kit's hand. No, no, I was like, jacket. <laughs> well done, jacket. Next article of clothing. Sarah. Kimono. Kimono. Kim oh. Kardashian, Sandra O, oh, and Dr. No. <laughs> Kimono. Final question in this round. Which clothing is this? Yes, Sarah. Mini skirt. Oh, of course it is. Too many drivers and a Kurt Russell. 
mini skirt. <laughs> Very well done. Well done to our question setters as well. Um, lovely round for Sarah there. Let's take a look at our first leaderboard on Friday. She's got to win today to hold Luke off. She means business, Luke, mm, I think. Good start. Exactly. Philippa, you always get off to a slow start. Always do, and you have again today. Nabil and Luke, you have two points each. Sarah Millican gets off to a fast start again. Five points. Well done, How Sarah. About well done, Sarah. How about it? Four rounds to go. Our final pairs game of the week is... My perfect match. Philippa, you get to choose your partner. Who would you like to play with? Sarah, please. Ah, oh, that's nice. Sarah and Philippa are a team. Nabil and Luke are a team as well. Now, in this, I am looking for my perfect match. I, I'm always looking for two different things, so you need to find me the person who fits both criteria, please. So my perfect match, Sarah and Philippa, would have the following characteristics. I would like someone who has featured in a Marvel comic as themselves. That's something that I like in a partner. But also was born on Christmas Day. And one of the following two is my perfect match, but which of them? Justin Trudeau or Shane McGowan? I don't know who's born on Christmas Day. See, I think that's a bum steer because of Shane McGowan did the Christmas song with Kirsten McCall. So I think it's delicious Justin Trudeau. <laughs> We've got a 50% <laughs> chance of Should getting this right. That? Is that all right? Let, Justin's better looking. OK. Let's go for I, Justin. Yeah, I'm not sure Shane would have gotten a Marvel comic. I could be absolutely wrong. Um, we're going to go with Justin Trudeau. So you think that Justin Trudeau has featured in a Marvel comic as himself and was born on Christmas Day. Is Justin Trudeau my perfect match? He is. Oh, Absolutely yeah. well done. Thank you, Sarah. They were actually both born on Christmas Day. Oh, really? So it wasn't yeah. bum steer. Uh, Nabil and Luke, my perfect match this time, needs the following two characteristics. I am looking for somebody who has won a Grammy Award. Of course I am. But also has worked as a morgue beautician. That's my niche. Wow. You know, oh, Grammy winner, morgue beautician. Yeah. So one of these two fits both those criteria. Whoopi Goldberg or Rod Stewart? Has Whoopi Goldberg won a Grammy? I think they both have won Grammys. Um, oh, and... yeah. That might be it, they might both have won Grammys. Whoopi is so random and... Mm. I mean, yeah. Rod's pretty random. I think Whoopi. Same. Let's go Whoopi. So we take a little look? Um, Come on. Whoopi Goldberg. Has she won a Grammy Award and worked as a morgue beautician? She has Yay. indeed. Yay. Very well done. Uh, one of the few people to win the full EGOT, Emmy, Grammy, oh, really? Oscar and Tony, ah, Bobby Goldberg. It's one for a comedy Whoopi. album. Rod Stewart has, of course, won a Grammy and used to work in Highgate Cemetery, but was not a more wow. beautician. Um, I'm moving on from Whoopi, and now I'm looking for somebody who has released an album, but has also written a Sunday Times best-selling novel. Am I looking for Nick Knowles or Anton Dubeck? Now, I think Anton has written yeah. a novel. I think they've both written an album, but I don't think Nick Knowles has written a Sunday Times best-selling novel. What I about think, his best-selling novel, The Red Pants? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Mm. That is lingerie be... range that's coming out oh, as right, well. that's different. Yeah, okay. That's different. I reckon it's Anton. I agree. Let's go with Anton. I, I put it on record, both these men, my perfect match, by the way. Be, oh, yeah. Be very happy with either of them. So, has Anton Dubeck released an album and written a Sunday Times best-selling novel? Absolutely right. Uh, and you're quite right, they have both released albums, but uh, only Anton has uh, also released novels. Well sort of done, Anton. quite dancing -y based as well, I think. One Enchanted Evening was his best-seller. Wow. Nabil, Luke, I move on mm -hmm. once again. OK. So now I'm looking for somebody who has a sibling who is one year older than them, I, you know, I yeah. just, that's what I like. And has attended a royal wedding. Uh, which of these two people would be my perfect match? Would it be Andy Murray or Serena Williams? That's quite a good one. Ooh. Oh. Hmm. I think it's Andy Murray. Do you? I don't know. I, I think Serena and Venus have two years between them. I mean, I tried to think, was I at a wedding? Did I go to the royal wedding? Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. I can't. I'm racking my brains, but was I there? Um, 
Now do Serena Williams. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Serena was there. Yeah, Serena is friends with Megan. I feel like Serena was there. I'm going Serena. You're going Serena Williams? Serena. I Let's feel like she was there. Look, I would be very happy if she was my perfect match. Is Serena Williams my perfect match? She absolutely is. Oh, oh well done. I was confident it was Andy Murray. I was sure it was Andy Murray. <laughs> they are both about 15 months younger than their uh, famous siblings, uh, the two of them. But, of course, uh, Serena was at Harry and Meghan's wedding. That's the end of that round, end of our final pairs game of the week. Oh. Um, oh. Let's take a look at what it's done to the scores. Like, we got all ours right. It was good partnering with you. Yeah. Well, they got all theirs right as well. Oh, it's a good partnership with no, these two. Two, two good <laughs> partnerships. Philippa, you have two points. Nabil and Luke, you got four points each. Sarah stood out in the lead with seven points. Mm. Luke has still got her in his sights, though. Just the three yes. points between them and three yes. rounds to go. Our next round today is... Well done if you said that at home. Now, this is a round that our viewers at home help us with. This time we sent our viewers the names of some films and they just had to reply with some words they would associate with that film. OK, and what we're going to do now is show you a word cloud of the words that were most commonly said by our viewers. We'll start with some of the more obscure words and we'll get bigger and bigger as we go on. But which films are our viewers describing here, please? Fingers on buzzers, everyone. What is this film? <laughs> Flying heroism. Soldiers. Oh, Nabil's gone very early. Is it Top Gun? Top Gun? It's not, I'm afraid. It does fit with lots of that, though. Uh, emotional adventure, jealousy. It sounds like a good film. Pig. Hold on a minute. Imagination. Bedroom. Uh, yes, Luke. Yeah. Toy Story. <laughs> Toy Story. Well done, <laughs> Luke. Absolutely, Toy Story. Cowboy. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. Yeah, they all make sense now. The earlier ones, yeah. Well, yeah. Spaceman, Cowboy, Pixar, and so on. Toy Story. What's this film, please? Dream Birth Nineties. Spoons. Hold on. Cat fighting cat. Reality simulation, Nabil. The Matrix? Is it The Matrix? Well played. Oh, very good. Just as Glitch, Glitch. was appearing there, Glitch. Nabil. Yeah. Nicely done. Point to you. What film, please, is this? Team... Team Suitcase. That's me. Clever Hustle Ensemble. Group, that's the same as Ensemble. Come on, everyone. Uh, fountains, yes, Sarah. Ocean's Eleven. Ocean's Eleven. It is Ocean's Eleven, Heist Vegas Casino. The final film. Exciting. Ooh, horses. Exciting horses. Exciting horses screaming. Mm. Skull, this sounds great. Tanks, yes, Luke. I've probably gone too early. War Horse. War Horse. It's incorrect. I mean, it says horses, doesn't it, and screaming. You'd think, and tanks. 80s, fedora, desert, motorbike, germs, rail. Oh, <laughs> yes, Sarah. Uh, Readers of the Lost Ark? Is the right answer. Well done. <laughs> Just as archaeologist comes up. Archaeologist whip hat. The next thing we asked our viewers to give us words for were mm. various plays. But which plays, please? Obsession. Classic school obsession. Yes, Nabil. Romeo and Juliet? Romeo and Juliet. Oh, how about that? It is Romeo yeah. and well Juliet. Done. That Impressive. is quick. That was quick. Shakespeare Love Balcony. Um, <laughs> yeah. Just bought a new house. We're going to put a Shakespeare Love Balcony on that. Yeah. <laughs> Next play. Notebook. Interesting notebook. Changeable, though. Ooh, intrigue and danger. Crime hunt. London thriller. Killer policeman. Yes, that is Philippa. Mousetrap. Is it the mousetrap? They're good at this. Ooh. It is the mousetrap. Very well done. Who done it? Mystery and murder. It's not set in London. 
it's in I'll... the countryside, but it's shown in London. Yeah, it's staged in oh. London, though. So yeah. they're essentially saying. And yeah. I like the fact that cheese is also because it's not actually about a mousetrap. No. <laughs> so, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's if that's what people said, you know, that's our viewers. <laughs> um, next play. Shoe think messenger. Questions, geezers, intellectual, intellectual geezers, Irish comedy duo. Yes, Nabil. I was going to say Waiting for Godot, but that's probably not what it is. Waiting for Godot? Beautiful. Oh. Well played, Nabil. Comedy. Nicely done. Well, tragic comedy. Final question in this round. Which play is this, please? Respected Wood. Bleak. Oh, tragedy, death, drama, classic. Oh, affair, persecution, adultery. This sounds great. Preacher, pagan. Yes, Salem Nabil. Witch Trials? Salem Witch Trials? It's incorrect, I'm afraid. Luke. The Crucible? The Crucible. It's about the Salem Witch Trials. You're quite right. It is. Well done, Salem and Witches. Yeah, that was your round, man. Uh, well played there. Thank you so much to our, our audience at home as well for, uh, for helping us with that round. It's much appreciated. Let's see what it's done to the scores. Getting a little bit closer now, a little bit tighter now as we reach the finish. Oh. Philippa with three. Luke, you have six. Great round there for Nabil with seven. Sarah Millican, she's holding on to a lead. Nine points. <laughs> Two rounds away from the trophy. Can you hold on? Round four today is... And the answer isn't now. This is a round where you can score a point for yourself or you can give a point away to one of your opponents, which is a bad thing to do right about now. Sarah, we'll start with you. I'll show you a question. I'll show you four possible answers. One will be the correct answer. The other three were written by Philippa, Nabil and Luke. If you choose one of their answers, you will give them a point. OK? Your question is... What was introduced to San Francisco International Airport in 2016 to calm passengers before they boarded their flights? One of these answers is correct. The other three were written by your opponents. Was it chamomile-scented candles? The music of Debussy? A pig who often wears a tutu? Or massage chairs? Which of those is the correct answer? I mean, I'd love it to be the pig. I don't know that pigs are calming. Like a dog. <laughs> That's calming, isn't but it? But pigs aren't calming. And it wouldn't be happy in a tutu. It's not agreed to that, is it? A pig. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to discount that one, even though that might come to bite me on the bum in a second. I feel like more fire in an airport is probably not a great idea. So the, okay. the scented candles I'm discounting. I feel like it's between the massage chairs and the music of Debussy. And I'm going to go with the music of Debussy because I don't think massage chairs just hurt and you've lost a pound. Uh, what do you think at home? What have you gone for on this one? Has Sarah just scored a point or given away a point at a crucial time? Is the answer the music of Debussy? Is not what was the correct answer? No! A pig who no. often wears a tutu. They have therapy animals there. So they, have, they do have dogs, but they also that, have a pig. That so has blown my mind. Sort of just somewhere to go and kind of hang out with a few animals and calm yourself down. Who have you given the point to? Who wrote the answer? The music of Debussy. Luke, ah, you've given a point well to mm, your big rival. <laughs> wow. Uh, chamomile scented candles was Nabil and Philippa. Oh, I thought massage chairs. chairs. I thought that was going to be the right answer. Philippa, you now have a question of your own with four possible answers. What was unusual about the football team that lost 2 1 to Real Madrid at a match in Hangzhou, China in August 2011? They didn't have a uniform. They were pensioners. It comprised 109 children. They all had the Chinese flag shaved into their hair. Well, China loves a uniform. China also loves children and pensioners. Mm. They're not so hot on weird shaving, are they? Nah. Nah. So, the 109 children, that's specific, isn't it? It's quite specific, yeah. I'll go but for that... the kitty winkies. So, the match was in Hangzhou in China. Were the opponents 109 children? Have you scored a point? 
You have scored a point. Very well done. It was Real Madrid's 109th anniversary. Um, who wrote they didn't have a uniform? Nabil said they didn't have a uniform. They were pensioners. Sarah and Luke, they had Chinese flag shaved into their hair. Nabil, a question for you now. What is the prize for the winners of the wife-carrying World Championships held annually in Finland? <coughs> a 12-hour pony trek, a whole salmon and vodka, a pig, or the wife's weight in beer? A pig, like, you're going to have to carry that back down with your wife? Yeah, I mean, um, that's just more to carry, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I don't know them to be big beer drinkers. Uh, they're, they're quite a healthy nation. Mm. Um, a 12-hour pony trek just seems weird. Doesn't Finland have, like, a lot of... Um... Wave machines? Yeah, like, they had, like, a break dancing. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Got a bunch of strong men just popping and locking. And just... um, <laughs> A whole salmon and vodka. Again, the, the addition of alcohol to that just makes it strange. So it's all four of them you turned down? <laughs> yeah, I think... <laughs> I, I don't know, a pig, whatever. Pig. Mm. You're going to go for a pig. What do you think at home on this one? Where are you going? So, has Nabil scored a point or has he given a point away? Is the answer a pig? It's not. What is the correct answer? Mm. Really? The weight of the wife in beer is the prize for that. So you've given away a point. Who have you given it to? Who wrote a pig? Sarah gets a point at a crucial time. Well played, Sarah. The 12 hour pony trek was Luke and a whole salmon and vodka was Philippa. Very well done at home. She said the wife's weight in beer. Final question of this round, Luke. Be a very, very handy time to score a point. Mm. Very bad time to give one away. As part of a 2005 Turner Prize winning project, the artist Simon Sterling temporarily transformed a shed into what? Was it a go kart? A boat, phantasmagoria, or an underwater garden? Well, I don't know what a phantasmagoria is. It's a sort of a magic lantern, a phantasmagoria. Oh, OK. I mean, my initial instinct was boat, but I'm between that and underwater garden, cos I feel like that's something that could be quite stunning. I think I'm going to go underwater garden. You're going to go underwater garden? Yep. OK. Philippa, is that the correct answer? No. It is not. It's what is the correct boat. answer? Oh, boat was, was the correct so answer, good. Luke. That's Unlucky. My instinct. It was called Shed Boat Shed, was the, uh, ah. was the name of it. Mm. Who said underwater garden? Sarah! Sarah. Oh, my Sarah. goodness. Of course it was Sarah. I mean, you know what? That deserves the Turner Prize, yeah. doesn't it? How <laughs> yeah. about that? Well done. Go kart was Philippa. Phantasmagoria was Nabil. <laughs> it was a good... I thought that was good. Yeah, good. I thought that was good. Surely that's, uh, that's that, <laughs> that sounds very Turner Prize-ish, to be fair. <laughs> that's the end of that round, and it ended very nicely for Sarah Middican, who needs to win today. Let's take a look at our final leaderboard of the week. Philippa with four, Nabil and Luke with seven points each. Luke started doing answer smashes yesterday. He can do it. But Sarah Middican takes a four-point lead into our final round. Well done, Sarah. <laughs> Here we go, everybody. We're going to decide who our trophy winner is, and we'll do it with a round of... Answer smash. Fingers on buzzers for one final time. Point for a correct answer, point off for an incorrect answer. Your first category is... Games and activities. Those will be the pictures. There will be clues above. What was the currency of Greece before it was replaced by the euro in 2002? Sarah. Drach marbles. Drach marbles. Well played. Drachma and marbles. Drach marbles. Next clue and next game or activity. Which DJ had a UK top ten hit in 1999 with Right Here, Right Now? Luke. Fatboy Slimbo. Fatboy Slimbo. <laughs> He's on it now. He's on it now, Luke. Well done. Fatboy Slimbo. Oh, Limbo. Fatboy Limbo. Slimbo. Next one. Which international football competition did England win in 1966? Luke. World Cup and Ball. The World Cup and Ball? <laughs> it's right, Luke. Well done. Next category. 
comedy writers is the next category. Those will be the pictures. The name of which pasta shape means thin strings in Italian? Sarah. Oh, God. Spaghetti Nafe? Spaghetti Nafe? Absolutely right. Spaghetti is thin strings. And Tina Fey, of course. That was very, very gutsy. Yeah. Buzzing in then. Next clue and next comedy writer. Which Berlin Wall crossing point on Friedrichstrasse was the site of a military standoff in October 1961? Yes, Philippa. Checkpoint. Charlie. I know him. Uh, take, sorry, take one Philippa. of my little points yeah, away. We're sorry, have to, Charlie. I'm afraid, and uh, we'll open up, Sarah. Checkpoint Charlie Brooker. Checkpoint Charlie, Charlie Brooker, Brooker is the I right knew answer. That. Well done. It's Checkpoint right. Charlie and Charlie Brooker. Brooker. Checkpoint Charlie Brooker. Next category is items of jewellery. Those will be the pictures. Which language, also known as Northern Chinese, has more native speakers than any other? Nabil. Mandarin. Mandarin? Mm. Well played, Nabil. It is. Mandarin and ring. Mandarin. Next question, next picture. <laughs> That's us done. The end of our quest for this wonderful trophy right here. Who's won, Sarah, I wonder? Mm. Let's find out who's won today first, shall we? The winner of Friday's House of Games is... Sarah Millican, of course. A lovely big win for Sarah. Sarah, four wins in a row. Woo. Which means more than your husband, Gary, who yeah. got three wins. I mean, that's the main thing, isn't it? I mean, with respect, <laughs> what a loser. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely going to be fuming, isn't he? Four prizes as well, although you gave away a prize yesterday to Philippa. What would you like to take home with you today, Sarah? Um, I'd like to give a prize to Nabil, please. Ah, oh, that's so nice. whatever you would like. Oh, uh, well... <laughs> the gentleman's cologne that you wanted yeah. earlier. Lovely Nabil Abdul Rashid takes home the House of Games gentleman's cologne. Well played, Thanks. Sarah. Well played, yeah. Nabil. Uh, so everyone has had a prize this week. Oh, That's how we yeah. Fabulous. So we've all had prizes, but there's only one trophy. And that trophy, of course, how could it go anywhere else? It goes to our champion, Sarah Millican. Congratulations, Sarah. Thanks. Beautifully done. Well done. Thank you. That was all right. Some good quizzing, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm always terrified of these things and I don't have any confidence in myself, so this has been a nice boost. Well, you should have confidence because you quizzed terrifically all week, destroyed all of them. <laughs> oh, no. Well, you know, in a nice way, though. But it's, she's also lovely, that's the yeah, problem. Yeah, you can be yeah. destroyed by a nicer yeah. person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use that as a quote of mine, of course. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's absolutely perfect. Um, Luke, congratulations on your win on Monday and your prizes. Nabil and Philippa, I know you didn't win a day, but you both took home prizes as well, so congratulations to you. Been a pleasure working with all three of you and quizzing with all three of you. Sarah, been a pleasure quizzing with you as well, and congratulations being our champion, Sarah Medican. <laughs> Hope you've enjoyed watching this week. We will see you next time on The House of Games. Tell you what we'll do, we should get your name engraved on it. So Gary's like, why have I not got my name engraved yeah, on it? Yeah, so mine's a little bit more special. Oh, we got, well, because yeah. Gary, you only won three days. Yeah, if you yeah. win the fourth, you get it. Yeah, you yeah. get a name engraved. Engraved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got a loser's cup, Gary, that's fine. <laughs> I love that.